I've been called out to Lower Oak in Wrexham to have a look at a reported engine malfunction. You can start by trying to confirm the customer's concern by checking the dip, but without any warning lights displayed, we're going to need to delve deeper into this. Let's crack out gel test from Eclipse and get the VCI plugged into the truck. With our OBD pins checked for powers, ground and can, and communication established on the VCI, we can get into gel test from Eclipse and see what is exactly going on. As usual, we can use our auto VIN identification on DAF for our truck selection and select Euro 6, as this isn't model year 17 and onwards. I'm going to run a main system scan here to see what error codes are in the vehicle. We have a few here relating to fuel injection, so let's get into this. Going into the PCIe CU specifically now. I'm going to go with the fault code that has occurred the most. And with information about the component, I've resistance values here for the injector to check if needed. But first, we can follow Jaltest's fault code troubleshooting to see if this is more than just an electrical fault through our cylinder performance test. This test carries out compression test and an acceleration test on the cylinders individually and at the end of the test we can interpret the data from the results and identify a possible mechanical issue. I won't bore you with the six individual cylinder tests back and two to the truck but on the grand scale of things, mechanically, this engine is perfectly fine. So back to the truck to continue our diagnosis, which we know is electrical and not mechanical. With the cab over, we can get this rocker cover off and by removing the series of bolts around the rocker cover and after a small argument with the rocker cover, it came off. With our DAF wiring loom suspended just above the camshaft on the MX-11, unlike MX-13 where it sits below the rocker arms, I've changed a fair few on both engines, and for reasons you will understand now. If we take a closer look at this wiring harness, we will see that the rocker cover cuts into the wiring harness due to engine vibration, which can lead to oil ingress into the wiring, which is never a good thing for wire integrity or resistance. DAF superseded this wiring harness with a modified version and that's my first point of call in getting this truck running correctly before we go down the injector route. We will start with the EGR valve heat shield and then we can undo the bolts which hold the wiring harness in which should give us enough flex to get the heat shield out and then get the wiring harness loose. From here I can remove the exhaust brake solenoid wiring. The engine has two solenoids, one for cylinders 1 and 3 and one for cylinders 4 and 6. And with the twist of the injector multi-plug and with the injectors unplugged, I can remove this from the engine. Price, I think the original part number was listed at £600, whereas our superseded one was £800. Unfortunately, you can't just buy a harness on its own, which wouldn't have been any good to us anyway, as we need the revised mounting position. Not the best way to open this with a Stanley knife, but luckily the wiring was towards me and not away from me. Before I fit this, I need to clean off all the excess dirt and paint buildup around the cylinder head. I would have preferred this steam cleaned first before starting work, but I'm in the customer's yard and not in a workshop with a steam cleaner. With the new harness dropped on the cylinder head, I can tighten the engine brake solenoid wiring. I believe the torque is 1.5 to 3 newton meters, something you never exceed once you snap one of these off. We were all apprentices once. I can then go about running the bolts down holding the wiring harness in place. I know there's a torque procedure for these on where to start, but from the middle out has always worked for me. With the rocker cover now on and everything torqued up to spec, I can start the truck, but no sooner did I start the truck, I had injector fault P0304 flash up and then go inactive. Convinced it's an injector fault now and not just a wiring issue, I won't bore you with the rocker cover removal again. To access number four injector, I've got to loosen the fuel filter module from the block. 
I can then remove the injector pipe from the fuel rail and then loosen the injector nut on the head, allowing me just enough room to get my hand in behind the fuel filter module and undo the injector tube. The injector clamp bolts are stretch bolts, so we won't be needing this, but we do need to keep the injector clamp. Just like having JAL test from Eclipse, it does help if you have the correct tools for the job, such as an injector puller. No room for heel bars in here to lever this injector out. And with our injector out, you can see the remains of the sealing washer at the bottom of the injector sleeve, which we're going to have to remove with this cleaning brush attachment. I can put this in the chuck in the drill, and within a few seconds, I know the injector seat is clean, and I've not damaged the injector sleeve. With an injector from DAF sourced, it came with a new sealing ring and O-rings for installation. I also asked them for a new retaining bolt for the injector clamp. I'm just going to take a picture of this trim code for later and we can carry on with the installation. I can remove the protective cap now and gently put this in the engine followed by our injector clamp and bolt. I can't stress enough the need to ensure the threads are free from oil on this as the last thing you need is one of these coming loose and damaging the injector sleeve. I can run this retaining bolt down now with a ratchet and finish up with the torque wrench at 28 newton meters before I angle torque it by 90 degrees. I'm just going to run the injector pipe back in the head to ensure it's sitting correctly and then I'll do my angle torque on the injector. I can then get my crow's foot on the injector pipe and angle torque that to not going to fall off ever and finally the nut on the injector rail. With the injector and fuel pipe all done up, we just need to slip the bolts back into the fuel module housing, which is easier said than done when it's not raining. <laughs> and finally, back on with the rocker cover, followed by the torque wrench again at 8 newton meters. Remember that picture of the injector? Well, I'm going to extract the text from the picture and copy it into a text file to use on gel test. Then, last but not least, we're going to go into modifying injector parameters and change the trim codes on the number four injector. This saves me so much time rather than typing in 38 digits. Although I have just found a data matrix barcode reader for gel test to do this. With our new trim code pasted in, I can update this code to the Vehicle Configuration Manager and clear the codes. With our fault codes cleared and the truck started and running okay, and no more error codes occurring, I'd say this was a fix, but only time will tell. If you've enjoyed this video, I've more injector fault diagnostics here, and as always, subscribe if you haven't, as it always helps the channel, like if you thought this was a good video, and more people should be seeing it, and I'll catch you in the next one.